All right, we're in the rear here. So I think I'm gonna do this sway bar first. So we took, obviously I took this under tray off, took these little plastic pieces off of here. I don't know why, I probably don't even need to take them off. But we're gonna be replacing these lower spring perch arms, sway bar, camber is here, toe is here, and cyber arm, whatever that is, is up here. So there's three arms we're replacing plus this basket. And then this has like a progressive spring, we're putting a linear spring in place. And then of course we're replacing the shock as well. And we'll end up using the top hat for our, the stock top hat. And luckily we don't have to go inside the car at all, everything drops from the bottom. So I think the thing I'm gonna do first is just take the sway bar off real quickly and swap that over to the new one. There's a little baby sway bar. So I find it's easier to just put the, uh, put the old bar right next to the new bar so you don't have to think about it. Okay. I gotta start using gloves more often. This would be good. We're gonna get the Tesla parts put on and the E36 is about to show up. Sucker up into place. It's gotta go up under that. Yeah, like that. So I think it's further out is softer, further in is stiffer. We're in. Play bar's done. Okay. Now let's take the shock bolt out first. That'll relieve tension. Then we'll take this out here, the two bolts out, and we'll take drop the spring out. So what size is that? Okay, and then, so we're gonna change out this whole arm. I'm gonna take this one off too. So we're gonna have to pull jack that into place. So clearly that's not the best way to do it. So I think take the other one out first. We'll do that on the other side. So we ought to be able to get the spring out now. <clears throat> That's how the spring comes out. So there's our, whatever this thing's called, lower spring basket thingy. And then this is a rather large, hefty, progressive spring that we're gonna be, or a, yeah, swapping out for a linear spring. I think, so I think we should take our shock out, replace our shock while we have this all torn apart. So since I have this all out, it's probably gonna be easier to do our arms first. It's gonna sit in that basket. So there's two bolts up here. I need to come out. We're gonna reuse this, I believe, on the aftermarket shock. I put a little collar on there so it doesn't fall through. It doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, see there's a little, little plastic collar to keep it from falling off. We'll leave that on there because we're gonna need that. Now, no spring on this, so we don't have to worry about a spring compressor. Okay, let me go consult the instructions here because I gotta look at what settings to set up the shock. So let's take off the first. So I think I'm just gonna take all three off and then put all three back on in the same sequence. So the camber arm is the long one. Camber arm, cyber arm, whatever that is. Um, is, that, is that, what is it really called? Like a rear trailing arm or something like that? I don't know. 
all those all those torques. So there's your non-adjustable camber. I haven't decided what camera I'm going to run yet. I think I'm going to do like negative, probably like negative one three or one four. Stock is one two. So now yeah, let me just stick with that. All right. So this one is a not a twenty one. Looks like maybe a twenty. <clears throat> cyber arms on. Let's see. I don't know how I'm going to get that bolt out of there. If I do get it out, I don't know how I'm going to get it back in. It's totally in my way. It's close. Like, how do they get that bolt in there from the factory? Do they weld the car afterward? Come on out, little buddy. Okay, got it. Maybe shave that bolt a little bit. So which way does this thing go? So it sits in there like that. Let's see if I can get our toe arm and done a little easier. That's not the toe arm. That's the uh, internet arm. Get your Wi-Fi. This is the toe arm. i to be careful with the speed sensor wire. I don't pull on it. Got to mark this first. Shoot. The axle should hold everything in place. here so I'm gonna take this so I put some blue lines on here so everything can line back up the way it was on this little this little camber wouldn't that be camber adjustment I guess that's OE camber adjustment, but we're putting an adjustable camber arm on, so we should have a whole lot more adjustment now. Oh, shoot. Put it on backwards. Fucking idiot. Actually, I think it's probably... Is it better to do it that way where you can see? Yeah, I think upside down is probably better. Who knows? It's, I mean, it's, it's the same way. They're equal. Now comes the hard part. <clears throat> I think I like it with the writing facing down. It certainly does look pretty. Obviously, we're going to go get an alignment, but it'd be better to drive there without it being broke, broke fit. Down. <clears throat> a couple of Mormon Uggas, good to go. Cyber arm. Now comes the dicey part. How in the world am I gonna get this back in here? So this one's got some flex to it. I wonder if I can just do that. Yes. So you just have to, you probably can't really see that, but you have to flex the crap out of this thing and bend it to get it on there. Certainly looks pretty with all these anodized aluminum fancy bars for all this grocery getting I'm gonna be doing. Michelle said, don't mess it up. I said, well, it's pretty much guaranteed to mess it up. So just be prepared for wobbly driving and ticking noises and all that kind of stuff that comes with all this aftermarket nonsense. But man, it's fun. It's 
I'm dreaming about the possibilities of how much faster and lighter the car could be, how much worse it's going to drive. Ugh, shoot. I need to do a couple wackaroos on it. Boom. Cyber arm. Complete. I think this is the way to go though. Kind of take them off in that sequence. It's probably the smart thing to do. Okay, cyber arm's on. Let's put our speed sensor back in place. Where that belongs. Upper camber arm. Same theme of doing it facing down. Uh, yeah, that's more like it. So these come set the way you should, the way you should leave them, at least until alignment. So they are set roughly the same length as stock. Unless you're going with some, going for something a lot more aggressive. Okay. Good. Let's set up our shop. First thing I got to do is figure out what my settings need to be. All right. So compression rebound. So rebound is up top. So we're going to go to full stiff. And this is our compression. Or 12 on compression, 10 on rebound. It's the opposite direction, okay. For full stiff there. One, two, three, 10, 11, 12. And we're gonna go 10 up here, which is the opposite direction. We gotta take the top half off of this stock shock. Got it. Surprised it didn't come off. We don't need this jacket. Uh, do we? Let's see if it fits. We don't need the bump stop. Yeah, I don't think you'll want this because then you won't be able to adjust it. Slowing down here. Running out of juice. Oh, come on. Dropped it in there twice. It only needs to be 20 Newton meters tight. So I might be able to just give it a little, a little, little bit of something. Yeah, that'll do it. And you put the lock nut on top. Is that not a 17? So there we go, KW shock. Set up. Uh, with this turn, dang it. You wanna make sure that this face is forward. And it doesn't turn, it's part of that. See what I'm saying? You wanna have that face in the same direction. Let's see if I can make that happen. That bro is good to go. Let's put it back in there. easy stuff. Now we got to try to get this all lined up down here. That's going to be the hardest part. Yeah, so it wants this part here. So this part to be 15 millimeters. The gap between this and that. As your starting position. I like how they give you a starting position. That way you're not like put the thing on, the on and the car's like tent on stilts. Good. Okay. So then this will sit here like that. You put the little rubber 
thingy in place, I think. So this is where it's gonna be tricky. I'm trying to get this all lined up. the spring, the perch. We need the old pole jack here to help us out. This all is gonna this all has to go together as well as the spring sitting here as well as the perch sitting up top. And it doesn't a lot of times like on BMWs it'll just lock in place up there but actually not too bad I don't think. I can keep my mouth shut. Get this thing on first. Uh-oh. And tire dressing back in stock. Okay. It, the reason I had to bend it out of the way was because the, uh, the, um, this needed to come yeah. that way. Yeah. Purple oh. cards here. Oh, sick. Piece of cake. That looks pretty sick though, doesn't it? Holy crap. Yep. That's a rear suspension, bros. And do the other side. And we got ourselves a setup. Make sure our springs, yep. That was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Way easier. Check it. That's freaking sweet. Nice. Michelle's gonna be so pumped to get groceries in this thing. This looks like the Civic's rear end. All the cool stuff going on. All right, I'm breaking all the rules here. Putting the nut, lug nuts on with the, uh, the mid torque. You should be screwing them all by hand, but um, we're gonna put this thing on the ground, see how it looks. I got two coats of uh, EXO on top of the Crystal Serum Light on my calipers, have them debadged, nice and clean. No logos, looks awesome. I like this, you know, unplugged logo is kind of cool there. Uh, you probably you might be able to see some of that with the uh, new wheels once I get those. Uh, but we're going to put it on the ground and see what the height looks like. Uh, again, I think we're probably going to do like negative one, three or one, four, something like that, front and rear. Uh, and so there's a there's guidance from Mountain Pass Performance on how to set up the car for the street. Where's the where am I going? So now we'll just play with ride height. <clears throat> if I'm lucky, it'll be set up okay. And I'll probably wait. We'll see how it drives, the way it's set up. Obviously the toe, it will probably be off. Uh, it shouldn't be off too, too much, but we'll get an alignment done. Um, probably after I get the wheels. I don't know, we'll see. If it's way off, <clears throat> If it's way, way off, we'll get it done now, but <clears throat> I think we'll be safe to roll around town in it with the setup the way it is because the mountain pass sets up all the, all the, the camber arms and all that stuff, toe arms, to be pretty much the same length of stop. I can't believe, I, I think I'm actually probably going to sell these wheels and tires. They're terrible. So just, I'll let you know. All right, let's see. I just ate a spicy chicken sandwich. 
Got a little runny, little runny nose there. Cleared me out. That looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to tell because these wheels, they're so sunk. And you're lower than your dad now. I mean, look at that. We need like a 45 millimeter spacer on that. Seriously. I mean, you would seriously need at least a 35 millimeter spacer. So, I like, I think, I don't know. What do you guys think? It's so hard to tell with these crappy wheels. I mean, I set it up five millimeters lower in the front. You know, I'd set the, uh, I put the setting five millimeters different than what they suggest in the front. And I left the rear at the same that they suggested. It does look a lot better. If that's, a th if that's such a thing on this, if it's even possible on this. The front offset isn't as bad. The rear is just so sunk. I'm telling you, man, when I'm done with this thing, you guys are going to like it. All right, that's a wrap for lowering, people. You got to buy it. I'm telling you, you got to buy this chair. It's so freaking good. It's so good. It's $500. It's a freaking however many $100,000 car. It's a $30,000 car when I want it to be, and it's a $100,000 <laughs> car when I want it to be, just depending on who I'm trying to stick it to. So anyway, nerds, this is it. This is the car set up like this. I'm going to leave this, this height, ride around a little bit, see how it goes. Um, I've got to get an alignment, obviously, uh, but the wheels should be coming. When are we getting the wheels? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow. maybe. Next weekend. Bro. I don't really care. I've got E36 to work on. Anyway, thanks for watching. The car, it, it, it looks better already, I'm telling you. It's going to be some... Oh, look at those brakes, dude. The brakes are so sick. You need some tint on this thing. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it tinted. It looks I'm just waiting to get my garage cleaned out because there's too much dust in here to do tint. Uh, so i got to do it in my garage in my house when it's all clean. Because like when, when we see you like driving around in it sometimes... It's just like, like, who's that nerd? Like, yeah. You look like such a loser. <laughs> 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 I'm not a loser, Bryce. Be nice to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like because I like to sit upright. You know, I sit straight up, holding on to the wheel like this. It's 129 foot-pounds of torque. I'm gonna torque these down and then do something with this thing. I'm done. I'm tired. That was a big project, but we cleared off the whole countertop. It looks pretty good. It is. Then my uh, all my aero parts should be here shortly. We'll call them aero parts, not body kit. Aero parts. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Yeah, that's all I got. See ya.